Hey, smart listeners, it's Will. Um, I just uh, I snuck in here because I uh, really wanted to connect with you guys. You know, just us, just one-on-one, just being honest, just sharing experiences, and really breaking down all these barriers, you know. Anyway, this has been great. All right, let's go. It's an all-new Smart List. Smart. So, uh, listener, uh, Arnett's got his TV hair on right now. Yeah. He looks incredibly <laughs> handsome. They just snapped it in. You're, uh, you're on a lunch break, is that right? Mm-hmm. Down there in Atlanta? Indeed. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to have for lunch today, aside from a great interview? You know, today for lunch, I think I'm having, it's a, uh, a salad. Mm. Uh, it's a Mediterranean mm. salad. I've been eating these great, by the way. If there's anybody and you're in the Atlanta area and looking for some food, my friend Brandy down here, she has oh, a nice little business. Boy. She makes there's food for someone people. Someone just got a deal on their monthly expenditure. No, not, I'm already done. I'm already <laughs> Spell done. Spell her last name. Uh, no, it just, it's, I think it's What's like. What's her website? She we'll works with a, a lot of people and she, I got to say, incredibly good, delicious. I'm already done. I've already fully mm. paid so that there's, I'm not getting anything out of it other than she's so good at what she does. And I mm. really, mm. and a person who works super hard and always delivers, I've been Enough. really impressed with it. Enough. You know what I noticed the other day, too? I want to say this. You know when you go online, sometimes you go on Twitter and you see people going, especially people who have... Hang on a second, but let's just talk about hashtag relatable. Did you just yeah. give a, 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 a recommendation for a personal chef, if anyone's in, ever in Atlanta? It's so relatable. Yeah, I'm just... Sorry, <laughs> sorry. To movie and TV stars. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> any, any, so, uh, any jet carriers you want to plug to? Jet Edge. They're well, yeah. your favorite. We, You're the ones that. who turned me on to them. So. <laughs> Pretty sweet. You want to go down this road with no, me? No, no, continue, I don't please. Think so, so mm-hmm. what I want to say is this: you know, you go on, you see these blue verified checkmark people, and they complain about stuff, and they, 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 ha- they, they, um, they tag like, uh, you know, the company, like, hey, Coca Cola, my, I opened up a Coke and it was flat, or like, hey, yeah, Hertz, yeah. my car was at the, right. and and they're doing it in a public way to complain because they want to get to the yeah. front of the line because they're real yeah. n- noisy, you know, squeaky wheels. Mm. And there you aren't almost enough said noisy bottom. I heard. I you. know, but but I almost <laughs> did. Well, bossy. I That's I was gonna say a bossy, bossy bottom. Hey, keep Scotty out of this. So or a power. Oh, bottom. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Sean <laughs> 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 But you know what? Like the other day, I was thinking I traveled back and forth from here from Atlanta to New York. Is the plane getting York. close to the run to the, to the I, yeah. landing zone? Yeah, and I flew on Delta, and I had weather delays both ways. Mm-hmm. And the people at Delta Airlines, can I tell you something? Sure. Everybody was amazing. The people who were working the gate, the people checking you in, the people on the plane, all the attendants. Everybody was amazing. No, I feel like in that moment, I thought. All these people, they get so much shit all the time, and every one of these people was so fucking good. That's and I want nice. them to. And I thought, like, they need to know that they were they were doing a good job. And I got no skin in this game other than to say they they were really Somebody nice people. Somebody had a real uh, nice Easter, I guess, huh? I, yeah, I did. For you. I had did with the kids and stuff. It was nice, but you know. Is this before or after you got in a huge fight with the uh, a t- a flight attendants? Mm-hmm. Well, all I'm saying is, look at the footage. I didn't start it. <laughs> My mask was on. No, it was uh, honestly, these people were so amazing. I just thought, why don't they just get some love? How about we just start going, hey, these people were great. At their I job. love that. I yeah. love that. So that's it. Well, you, you're preaching the choir. You know, my mother was a flight attendant for Pan Am right. all those years. And, that's right. And uh, they, uh, they, they don't get their due. You know what, Jason? Somebody asked me about this today. True story. Did your mom and dad meet on a flight? True story. Uh, n- no, but they did meet, my dad and his buddy went to, uh, what they were told was a stewardess party there oh, in no. uh, New York. Yeah. No. And they were like, well, let's go get laid. No. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, they both found their wives there. Um, wow. no kidding. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just a party of stewardess, or flight attendants, female flight attendants. In, the, in those days, it was stewardess. Pan Am, yeah. too, you know, with, the, yeah. with the, that bowler hat and the little powder blue outfit. Wow. Pretty top level. Never knew that. I can't wait to interview you. It's yep. going to be so exciting. <laughs> Gang, yep. today Uh-oh. brings us a fellow that I've been watching and studying and admiring for as long as I can remember. He is an incredible actor in both comedy and drama and is equally talented as a director in both oh. genres as well. At just... Nine years old, he was immediately one to watch when he shot from the cannon on the short-lived but much-loved series, Kate McShane, 
Sean, huh? And at 15, he doubled down with a shocking arc on the subversive yet sexy Guiding Light. What? After a brief and inspired take on adult films called The Hustler of Money, he found work at Saturday Night Live. Not seeing what he was looking for there, he went on to bring us some of our favorite characters in both television and film. Characters like Garth Motherloving, Kaka Peepoo, Pew Pew, <laughs> Silly Sammy, Gaylord, Chaz, Derek, guitar center guy, and the deeply sensitive, intuitive, magical Tony Wonder. Please welcome oh, Jerry no, and Ann's boy, Mr. Ben, no. Mr. Franklin ben, Stiller. No. Oh my <laughs> Ben. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, look. I like you pulled out the Kate McShane. Uh? That's pretty good. <laughs> Listen, oh Wiki- Wikipedia really brings all the deep research what when you need fu- it. And I didn't know your middle name was Franklin. What a hoot. Um, no, my, my middle name is Edward Mira. I know. <laughs> I know. But wouldn't it be great if it was Jesus. Franklin, too? Benjamin Franklin Stiller. Come on. Coming out with a laugh? I know. That's Jerry and Ann's work. I, first of all, I love the show, guys. Thank you, And man. it's really Thank fun you, to be here. Yeah. Um, but I was listening to how it gets ramped up, and I couldn't tell where it started. Yeah. So the chemistry feels it feels very real. It's like a real thing. It's not something you guys put on for the show. No, no as you it's, see, it's, we just we just connect. They we just start rolling. There's yeah. no there's no method to it. And God, it's, it's amazing. It's pure stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. But Will, why Will you look like you're doing a confessional for? Um, the Bachelor, or, I mean, or just <laughs> hold up a sign and say that you haven't been beaten. <laughs> I'm in an office. I'm in an office in a production office. And you got good lighting there, though. It's not bad. Really good lighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ben, are you in Bruce Wayne's library? Or I am in my 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 room, my office, and my house in uh, in New York in Westchester. Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it does have that kind of vibe. Ben. So you're still up there, in Westchester, Ben. Yes, for uh, I guess like the last twelve or thirteen years, we kind of go back and forth between New York City and Westchester. But That's yeah, nice. Um, yeah. I feel like I feel like Jason. Like the last time that we had dinner or hung out was when we were moving from LA back to New York. And do you remember this? I've, I, I, walk and, me, walk I, me through it. Well, we had dinner. I forget who else was there. <laughs> I don't remember much. Remind him of your name one more time, too. That would be good. I think J.J. Abrams was at the restaurant and came over and said hello. That's what that's what I remember. And then you good said, God. I feel like you made a joke about, like, you're going, you're moving to New York, but you'll be back, like, in a year and a half or something. Do you remember that? I, I'm shocked that I don't remember that. <laughs> um, was I drinking still not, at the I'm time? Shocked. <laughs> um, I, I, I think we both were. Um, no, I... Um, at least 20 years ago. Yeah, um, no, but we, we have been, I've been, I've loved being in New York for the last... I'm yeah, so I mean. jealous that you lived there. And, and yeah. you, because I, I, the Westchester, first of all, I was born in Rye. So for some, I guess that's the reason I've got some sort of hankering to get back there, but... And you've stayed in Rye this whole time, buddy. Hey, uh, <laughs> um, Just, you flipped the spelling, but you stayed right in it. I mean... <laughs> Did you go to Rye Playland as a kid? I, I, I th- <laughs> so they say. I left when I was two. But I've, I've been back there. I actually uh, shot at, at, at Playland. Um, oh, you did? We, we shot a, uh, some of a film there. So it's still open. It's still happening. It's still open, okay. uh, but it's so pretty up in there. And where you guys are, it's just like... Oh, this I is how, that. Sean, you'd know, Rye. This is where the New York Rangers practice facility is. Oh, God. Ah, I think I have some photos. Yeah. I have that's some photos of me back there. Yeah. Ben, do you remember the last time we had dinner? Uh-oh. Oh, no. Say yes. I love that this is a circle of people who oh, don't remember God. having dinner with each other. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you remember it? No, I don't. We, we've never had it. It never happened. Oh, no. I know it never happened. Could you imagine, Ben, if you were like, yes, it was wonderful. Thank you for paying. Will, do you remember the last time we had lunch? I, I, wait, I do, actually. <laughs> Would I it do? have been during a lunch break on Arrested Development? No, it was at the Chateau, and we were talking about Burt Wonderstone. Yeah. I, oh, yes. Oh. Yeah. Wow. How about this? How about I remembered and you didn't? Nobody oh, can stop God. me for memory. Was that's Stuart true. Kornfeld there? I feel like he might have Do you been. want to know, wait, Sweet Stuart, for do. one second, Ben, that's one of my favorite comedies of all time, Burt Wonderstone. I think it's hysterical. This is Steve Carell as well? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. And uh, yeah. do I is uh, Jim Carrey as well? No. I never saw it. You're conflating. <laughs> <laughs> ben, we talked about it. Ben and I talked about it years ago when I was still on Arrested Development. Yeah. 
and we talked about it. And I think Stuart was there, as Farrell calls him, old red beard. And he, every morning we were on Blades of Glory, Ben, which you produced, as you know, with Stuart. Yep. And uh, and Farrell would walk up to uh, to Stuart and grab him by the beard and go, it looks so real. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, rest in peace, sweet yeah. Stu. He was my producing yeah. partner for about a long time, and he was an amazing guy. I love yeah. that, man. Oh, fascinating, I fascinating guy. So, uh, uh, Ben, now you've been... I feel like you have just gone down the directing hole. By the way, not that's in a good way. <laughs> You've just it seems I have. like you're you're like you're just directing series and and movies all the time and it's like yeah. you are you ever going to emerge again as Ben Stiller <laughs> comedic uh, humongous yeah. comedic star? Yeah. Ben, he gets on me about this too. Don't don't yeah. don't let him beat you up. I'm trying to crawl out of the directing hole. It's a deep hole, you know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, don't buy it. It's <laughs> I like it. I like being in the hole. I mean, I, I do enjoy it. Keep it clean. Um, and I try to, I try to not um, think about acting when I'm directing. I actually don't worry about it when I'm directing. I, I enjoy just directing. Because a lot of years I spent, you know, directing and acting, which you do, Jason, incredibly well. And I do remember another interchange we had a couple of years ago, maybe like three years ago. That's an accurate way of describing uh, uh, spending time with Bateman. Interchange. Yeah, interchange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, an interchange we had about <laughs> directing. It was the night you won you won directing Emmy. Yes. Well deserved. Thank you. And sir. you were talking about directing and acting, and you said you that you like it because you feel like it takes out the middleman. That yeah, and it's a one less actor you've got to have a this sometimes uh, delicate creative uh, negotiation with. Yeah, you're kind of making it sound easy. I think it's not that easy, and I feel like you're able to do it very well. But Ben, I, I would say I would say hard. this though, Ben, as, for, as Jason said, it cuts out that long conversation. And Jason, in your case, it cuts out. If you've ever <sighs> acted with Jason, it cuts out the thirty minutes of questions from Jason. He's his own <laughs> worst, uh, you know, director or Isn't actor. Fun as watching a me ask myself questions though, because <laughs> because what I do is I I switch over to the other side and I answer it, and then I come what, what he likes right. to do is go like, well, this is a really simple situation. There must be a complicated reason for why it's like this. <laughs> but but Ben, do you, do you like to watch the playback of yourself? Do you do uh, that? Because I, I worked with a director actor once a long time ago who loved to watch himself in you know in playback, and we would just watch him watch himself and laugh at himself. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> really. Uh, well, I'd yeah, love, no love, no I'd love three guesses at that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, I I won't do that. But um, but don't you? F I mean, I've been trying to do what you do from an acting standpoint uh, my whole career, and that that is basically this great proxy for the audience. You you are the audience. You are the everyman. You are the straight man. You are the person the camera needs to cut to after something outrageous has happened or something dramatic has happened or something. Like that. So mm -hmm. don't you find that when you were acting and directing that you had this great sort of ease that you knew that the sort of the, the grounding element was taken care of, that you didn't have to worry that there was going to be this person at the center that is normal so you could take these bigger swings comedically around with the other characters and stuff? Uh, sometimes I felt like that. I mean, I, I did feel like once it came around to having to do my stuff, I kind of had a sense of what I wanted to do. But I also felt a lot of the time, and maybe it's because I did it over a number of years and sort of got to the point where I just, it felt like a lot of work to then have to jump, like set up the shot and then jump in front of the camera. And then you have right. to act. Right. Then you have to mm -hmm. do it. And I felt like that was I, harder to do than, I felt like I couldn't concentrate on both. And the first day that I started uh, on Escape at Dan or the first, which is like the first thing I directed, I didn't act in. The first yeah. day I was so happy. Yeah. I was so yeah. relieved. Yeah. Not yeah. To, like to set up a shot and then not have to jump in front and sort of care what, you know, like my hair was and all that stuff. But just... what isn't acting, acting seems as comfortable for you as, as it is for me. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy, but it, it seems comfortable enough for you where it wasn't that much of an effort to act. And instead it was actually, here's somebody who's in front of the camera that is mindful of all the other technical things that are going on that you can actually help by how you are acting or by hitting that mark or not shadowing that person or do you right. find that it was nice to have a, a a a soldier there that was taking care of all this stuff for you 
a soldier in myself, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. somebody that's um, making it all kind of come together. Yeah, but I never really, I never really thought about it that way because I felt like, okay, that's just part of everything that's going on, you know? Yeah. And I mean, what do you think, though, when you're doing it and you're Guys, directing... we're going to be with you in one second. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what? This is fascinating because this is much is more... Is it, though? I'm waiting yeah, for somebody to start snoring. It's, okay. it's much more of a deep dive into how Jason works than you <laughs> at every moment. And what's great is is that his, his sort of, his acting ambition is to just provide a blank slate yeah. For the audience, to, for the editors to cut to, I mean, what a, what a, what yeah. an art, what an artistic objective to have! Fucking great! I just want to give I want to give them something, just a cut point. Somebody did not his, block his, the light. Yeah. His nickname yeah. has become Cut Point, and um, <laughs> which is great. You'd think that he'd be insulted by it, but, right, but now, now Ben, all right. So then, so then no acting. I was just going to wait. Wait, yeah, I was just going to no, say this, Jason, more, kind on. of, kind of to what you were saying, Jason, which is. I don't know if it's entirely true. You have played you have played characters who have been at the center of a bunch of insane situations, but you and who are sort of put upon. Uh, but you've also a lot, your bread and butter has also been playing characters who are completely unhinged or completely out there. You've true. actually moved quite seamlessly between the two, and I wonder. I actually, I've always wondered, like, do you, which do you like Just playing? Just a bunch of characters are going through my head right now. <laughs> I know, now. same here. Jesus between Christ. unhinged and blank slate, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, between unhinged and blank slate, what would you rather do? Because the robot uh, loves being blank slate. Go ahead. <laughs> I enjoy, I mean, honestly, it's been a few years. It's, I never thought I'd go this long in my life without acting, really. Yeah. It's been like five or six years, yeah. and I never, as a just as an actor over the years, thought, "Oh, I take that much time off." And I think when I look back at it, I enjoyed, I enjoyed all of it. Enjoyed the different, you know, the, some of those broader characters were, you know, tonally things that are just so like over the top that I felt like it was like more fun to do that kind of thing. But then I'd also enjoy being in somebody else's movie where I could just be, a, you know, a real human being and try to also like kind of maybe not have to worry about really, maybe not be as self-aware uh, about what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Do you know what you I mean? Know, do you ever get like, like we're all four of us, we all produce stuff as well, right? And I find myself, when I'm, a, when I'm producing something and an actor has an issue or wants to discuss, I'm like, God, I don't want to fucking deal with that. They're crazy. Actors are fucking crazy. Yeah. And then I'm an actor <laughs> in something and I turn into a crazy person. Yeah. Like, do you feel that way when you direct? Are you like, I know how to deal with this kind of situation or this pathos of this human being because I've been there? It's a, it's a shorthand, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's what... Yeah, what Jason is saying, like, you don't have to worry about that with yourself, you right, know, that right. you can just kind of do your thing. But Jason, you have to deal with this, and when you're directing and acting with other actors, how, you know, every actor has their own thing, has their own point of view where they're right. coming from, and you have to figure out how to connect with them. And sometimes when you're acting in a scene with them, and you have to also give them something or try to give them some direction, that can be, I mean, I'd imagine on the show, since you've worked with these same actors for a long time, you guys have a sort of a shorthand and you yeah know each other. yeah but then you but then there's also there's the the day players as well that you don't have that history with or right. any other project where yeah it's you know it, there is there's a different uh thing you need to do as a director as opposed to an actor uh for sure with with respect to making sure people are comfortable it's, but it's there's tricky. also that thing jay i mean i don't know ben i don't know how much of the stuff that you directed you also wrote i, I did a short-lived series two seasons called flake that we did on netflix little Hold small for show. applause please no 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 there's no applause to be had but it but it was like it was an experimentation. It was an experiment, and I don't know. But we. It was but great. Well, but having William. having written it, thank you. But I wrote it, and then and then show ran it, and acted in it, and then second season directed. So I'd be in the scene with another actor, and great. I loved everybody who we had on the show, and they were great. However. However, having written the scene, and so then I've already got it coming from that, and then show running, and then thing, and then thinking about, well, we're never going to use this. And, you know, so I was constantly in that, and I found it very difficult sometimes. The last thing on the list was acting in the scene. Right. So, I, and I felt like that was the thing that I was like, I should be paying more attention to the acting in the scene, but I'm thinking about all these other things first. Yeah. And ironically, that's the most important thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, at the end I mean, of the that's, day. What, that's what I would feel like. Okay. At the end of the day, I have to make sure that I'm in present in the scene and somehow yeah. connecting and, you know, that's well, like I was going to say. So, so Tropic Thunder, for instance, who you wrote with our all of our good applause. friends, massive mm -hmm. applause, yeah. uh, Justin Thoreau, who's not a listener of, uh, of the show, so we can mention. No you know, need to hold for applause there. The guy, all. Yeah, right. I heard right the through. Justin episode that you guys did. Yeah, sorry. And, about and, that. and talk about a guy who gets down to it, and and you guys wrote it 
wrote together, and he got down into it. And and if he had sleeves, he would have rolled them up. Yeah. Uh, and but you guys, you guys, he owns no sleeves. Doesn't own no any sleeves. He owns no sleeves. Yeah. Didn't you almost buy him a box of sleeves for Christmas? I did. Will? I did yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. And I was gonna buy him. Yeah, Ben. I was gonna buy him a box of sleeves. But if you had such veiny biceps, come on, would you? That's have true. Sleeves? Yeah. yeah, that's true. It's sleeveless. It's, at 50? I mean, the guy looks like he's beautiful, 29. Beautiful, veiny biceps. He's yeah. beautiful. It's gorgeous. <laughs> he sent us a photo yesterday to Jason and me from the from the um, the jungle of Mexico. He's wearing a hat, and he said, I'm jonesing for adventure. And then you sort of see the whole photo, and he said, Indiana jonesing. And I was like, hey, buddy, didn't know there was a Nick Fouquet hat store down in the jungle. But anyway, <laughs> my, point is, my point is this. You write Tropic Thunder... And then you're in the scene. Do you have those moments when you're in a scene as the writer where you're going, huh, this is going differently than I thought? Yeah, I mean, I think it just comes down to it when you're doing the scene. What's going to make the scene work? Does it feel like it's working, you know? And it becomes yeah. its own thing. And I think that's no matter what, even if you are the writer and you're not in it, you have to let go of your idea of what the scene you think the scene was or what you wrote and, and just look at what's happening in front of mm. you right, as a director, and then figure out how to find the life in, in it in the moment, which is, I think that's just directing. You know? Can I ask you something? First of all, Ben, I have to say, you were one of those actors that I've always looked up to my whole life, and one of those people, you know, we all have those kind of inspirational, especially in comedy, and I was like, oh my God, I would kill to have... Ben Stiller's career. He seems like such a great guy. He's super talented. You actually said like, I'd kill Ben to have his career. <laughs> that's what you said. Well, that was the actual at. quote. <laughs> but, just to and, be. And then going on to directing, and I was like, wow, that's that's just so cool. I'm getting to my favorite show of all. One of my favorite shows of all time now is Severance. Yeah. I don't know if you've oh, if anybody's thanks, seen man. it. Of but, course, um, it's incredible. incredible. It's it's amazing. Thanks. I don't know if you know. I'm going to play with one of your lead actors don't, now, Tramel Tillman, right? Yeah. Jamel Tillman, yeah, he's amazing. Incredible. Don't say anything about that. I haven't okay. finished it yet. Oh, so oh, oh, oh. Okay, uh, but um, can you please, just as a huge, huge fan of you and that show, tell me the genesis of how that came about and... It's, without ruining the ending thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, so, you know in the finale? When, no. Uh, um, <laughs> I would kill you. No. It's incredible. By the way, the, uh, that finale is amazing. No, the... It's a great show business story. The writer, Dan Erickson, had been trying to get something produced as a writer for a while, and he sent the script to our production company. This is five plus years ago. He wow. sent as a writing sample. Wow. And Jackie wow. Cohn, who's the creative executive of our company, gave it to Nikki Weinsack, who was working the company with me, and we read it and was like, this is great. It's, you know, it's a great writing sample, but I was like, this would be a great show. And so we just got it set up at Apple. They were the only people who wanted to develop it. You know, you have, you, you know, you have a piece of material, you take it around town, and you yeah. pitch it, and you see who wants to do it. And I find that a lot of the time, it's like usually just one or two places that want to do something. Right. And they were the ones who wanted to do it. They were just starting up. They didn't really exist yet. And, and Christopher yeah. Walken, John Turturro, uh, Patricia Arquette, Adam Scott. I mean, it's the cast. is Tramel Tillman. The cast is amazing. Yeah. I didn't know Chris Walken was in it yet because I'm only. Uh, oh, go on, John. Um, <laughs> now, fucking now, go. Ben, I'm going to kill help, you. Help, help, help. You're one episode in. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm three episodes in. That's incredible. In. That's incredible. It's a, such a great show. We will be right back. Listener, we've got some incredible support from Tiki Brand. Now, what is Tiki? I'm going to tell you what Tiki is. Tiki turns your barbecue nightmare into an outdoor cooking dream. Tiki Brand helps you mitigate your mosquito mess. Tiki Brand Bite Fighter LED string lights will not only beautify your backyard, but also provide mosquito repellency. You'll get the ambience of string lights and the proven mosquito repellency the brand is known for. This is a one-of-a-kind innovation. No other string light brand has or can offer this unique benefit. Tiki gives you a sense of freedom to go out and enjoy your living environment. The repellency diffuser pods last up to 200 hours. This equates to 90 days at an average of 2.4 hours per day. The Bite Fighter diffuser pods can be replaced after their 200-hour lifespan and can be switched off allowing you to enjoy the glow without wasting repellent. Plus, configuration can be customized for protection in yards or on decks or on patios. All right? 
AJ. Yeah. AJ. Oh, sorry, this is my friend hey. Marty the Mosquito. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, uh, listen, uh, do, do us a favor. Uh, yeah. Ease off with the bite fighter lights, okay? Yeah, well, but, they're, uh, but they're so no, beautiful and they get rid around. of... I'm trying to buzz around your backyard. Yeah, why don't you buzz off, all right? I'm trying to cook burgers, yeah, Marty. I, I know, but I want to come over. I want to sit on your skin. I want to suck some of your blood out. And all of a sudden, you got these bite fighter lights going on, huh? Listen, let's turn on ambience and let's turn off mosquitoes. This is available at tikibrand.com. Smartless gets support from Topic. You have tons of streaming services to choose from, right? I mean, there's so many. So why subscribe to Topic? Topic is the only streaming service that handpicks its programming for the viewer who values high quality international crime, mysteries, and thrillers. Watch the Nordic noir cult hits The Bridge or The Killing and feed your obsession with mystery and murder with political undertones. I love it. I can't get enough of it. Okay, so one of these new ones I'm obsessed with is Nox, N-O-X. It's about this girl, Catherine. She's a modern-day French female, like Dirty Harry, right? She's retired, but when her equally formidable cop daughter goes missing in the Paris underground, she's gonna, she goes nuts for about looking for her. She looks everywhere. Follow her hellish descent into the underbelly of Paris. It stars award-winning French actress Natalie Bay. So if you're anything like me and you're like really into like murder, mayhem, and mystery, and crime, and all that stuff, I love it. Uh, check out Topic. It's fantastic. Go to Topic.com and start your seven-day free trial. And when you use code SMARTLESS, you'll get a special 50% off three months. That's like getting a month and a half for free. That's code SMARTLESS for 50% off three months of streaming. Oh, listener, have you ever gotten support from Native? Well, we do. And it's great. Will? What are we talking about, Native? Oh, Christ. I, we're I'm big asking fans we're... of Native. Yeah. The I, thoughtful formulation we're... behind we're... all their products uh, is something that we love, right, Will? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I... Because they understand it's not just what's on the inside that counts, but also on the outside. That's why Native is releasing their deodorant that we know and love in new and improved plastic-free packaging, exclamation point. Will? Well, I'm just saying that Nat oh. I love Native, and, and, and they, they do, they make great stuff, and you haven't given me a chance. Here he comes. Um, okay, look. Uh, Native, Native is doing, doing their part. Well, yeah, the Native's doing their part to help our Earth, our Earth collectively with, with their new 100% plastic-free and recyclable packaging. And, and when you buy Native's new uh, plastic-free recyclable package deodorant, you're, you're saving 37 grams of plastic. But, Jason— Is there more? No, not on that. I just wanted to, like, are we talking about Native? Is that we what we're are. Doing? I mean, you should know that they're a proud partner of the 1% for the planet okay. and are committing 1% of their plastic-free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. Just like all of Native's other deodorants, their plastic-free deodorant is aluminum and paraben-free. It kills odor-causing bacteria. You need some. And has— 24-hour odor protection to keep you feeling and smelling fresh. Ready to try plastic-free deodorant? Go to native.com slash smartless or use promo code smartless at checkout. So you do something with your voice too, Will. Get them excited. And get 20% off your first order. And get 20% off your first order. That's native, D-E-O dot com slash smartless. Or use promo code smartless at checkout for 20% off your first order. And now back to the show. When you look at something as, as, uh, as precise as what Severance is, as far as filmmaking goes, how, who, who is that in, inside you? Where did that guy grow from yeah. somebody who was a child of two incredible comedy stars uh, who, uh, and you coming up in sort of sketch world and, and, and then pure comedy world and then maybe some dramatic work. And like, how did that muscle sort of develop in you where it was like, you're such an incredible filmmaker, the, the precision and the, the focus to detail and camera work and, and sound and lighting and all of this stuff. Where did that, how did that develop? I mean, I feel like it's always been a part of what I love since I was a kid. And I don't know, I'm curious, I'm not just throwing this back to you, Jason, but since you do this, like, you've always, have you always loved directing? 
I have, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Since you were a kid? But did it come like I did where it was just from watching people around on the set like, oh my God, look how you make fake life. It's like I became fascinated with what a crew does. Like the a cast and stuff, acting all and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was like, but that was familiar to me. But seeing how people created like, oh, this is how you put, make an audience a little bit scared. You put the camera on your shoulder and you get like right. all these little tricks. And I love it, that. Yeah. I loved all of the, the nuts and bolts of filmmaking as a yeah. kid. I would get American Cinematographer. You mentioned Wow. Kate McShane, my early credit. That was my mother's show. Yeah. My mother had a series on CBS, an hour drama where she played an Irish lawyer who, um, you know, solved cases every week and only lasted for half a season. But I remember going on the set of that at Paramount Studios and I, I played Susan Strasberg's son, who was Lee Strasberg's no daughter. Way. And yeah. And I had one scene, I was, you know, nine years old. And I remember I was waiting around a corner on the set. I remember how the set smelled, how the, the fresh paint mm -hmm. and the lights. And there was a cue light for me. That was yeah. that when the light, when the red, red light, yeah, when the red light went off, then I would go in. And I re just remember thinking, oh, that is so cool. And I was just fascinated with all of it and his special effects makeup and, you know, just the process. So it was always, you know, I was obsessed with all those Planet of the Apes movies and Poseidon Adventure and all that. So I, actually the outside part of it, sort of the, the mechanics of it was more interesting to me at first than the actual telling of stories or expressing some sort of, you know, emotion. It was more about that stuff. And for a while I thought I wanted to be a cinematographer when I was a yeah. kid. But both well, of you guys yeah, had yeah. very, so if you think about it, you explain, you guys had very... Not the same trajectory, but you had very, there was similar that you were both young. Jason told this story recently how the first time when he lost his virginity, he had a Q light. Isn't yeah, that right, yeah. Jason? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. And, and I, I, said, I said, can we just hold <laughs> hold the cue just a little bit longer for me? And they kept telling him, you jumped your cue, you jumped your cue. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that was... And the light was started um, flashing. <laughs> premature cue light, huh? Yeah, but I mean, um, both your your parents were, uh, of course, your your mom and dad, uh, your mom, who I, I, I had the pleasure of knowing a little bit, and I did that movie with her years ago, Southie, with yeah. uh, the great Anne Mira, and, and uh, Gosh, a lovely so lady, great. and was always so kind and sweet whenever I interacted with her. And then your dad, of course was just the great Jerry Stiller. I mean, you grew up with these, you know, these people, these comedy, you grew up in a comedy environment and yeah, to Jason's yeah. point, in a cinema environment. And Jason, your dad was a director and a writer and uh, your sister was an actor and is an actor and you, you guys both grew up in it. in it. Was there any yeah. other way for you to go but to both yeah. become directors? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah, think or, so. Yeah, or just staying in this business. I mean, I would have been screwed, you know, if I was forced to do anything else. I never thought about doing anything else, I, you know, for better or for worse. Did you worse. go to college? Did you, did you get a degree in anything else? No. I went no. to UCLA uh, for nine months, and then I quit. I went to the acting de drama department because yeah. I wanted to go to the filmmaking oh, really? department, but they didn't have, it didn't start till junior year back then. And so, and I couldn't get into USC film school, I, you know, and I had not great grades. So I went to UCLA, which, I, you know, good enough grades to go there. Harder to get into UCLA now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I Is that just, true? Yeah. I, I did not do well there. I just sort of didn't assimilate, and I kind of just was like, well, I wanted to be doing it. So I quit and came back to New York. And so then did you feel a, a, a pressure just to just to make ends meet, um, knowing that, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm not going to study any other career. I'm, I'm, I'm quitting college. I'm moving to New York. Did you have that sense of like, well, I'm going to have to make rent and, and, and provide? Well, my, my parents were like, you could come home, stay home, and figure it out. And, it, you know, they didn't kick me out. They didn't kick right. me out. But there was that feeling when I came back, when I finally quit school, and I remember just coming back to my parents' apartment and then just like, th and thinking, now what? Now what do I do? How do I mm -hmm. go forward? And so I started, you know, I, would, I you know, worked as a busboy at a restaurant on Columbus Avenue. And then I went, started going to acting classes and started auditioning. But it took me about three years to actually get any work. Did you worry that you were going to get out from under the, the, the immense um, shadow of, of your parents? I don't, I, you know, I, I guess somewhere I did, but I think when you're that young and you just sort of have this idea of what you want to do, you don't think about it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how yeah. you felt, but I just never, I never thought about it that way. I, I knew that I had to figure out how to do my thing, but, and it was a little bit sometimes uh, daunting because I would go in and, you know, sometimes you're not, when you're not anonymous and you're not, and I wasn't very good too. I wasn't mm -hmm. great at auditioning. I wasn't really that comfortable as an actor. And so I would sort of fail a lot and not not anonymously, you know, be like, oh, Jerry Nance kid came in and right. he wasn't that great. <laughs> did you ever see did you ever see though your mom or dad like 
with the ups and downs of getting parts, not getting jobs, struggling here and there, then maybe soaring and then maybe coming back down, all the roller coaster of doing the business, did that ever sway you from not wanting to do it? No, it didn't. I mean, I was, I don't, you know, at that time, I was so thinking about my own thing and like where yeah, I was, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about where my parents were because they were who they were. Yeah. But when I look back at it now, and I've been working on a, uh, a documentary about my parents. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. And, oh, wow. uh, that's really yeah, cool. And it's been really interesting to kind of, you know, kind of look at their, you know, my dad saved everything. So there's so much oh, that's amazing. footage and writing and all these great, uh, you know, archives of stuff that they had. But they were going through kind of a tougher time when I quit school and came back. And they were trying to figure out who they were at that point in their career. But I was so unaware of that because I was just thinking of my own thing. And now when I look back at it, you know, they were, they were having to figure out, like, I, I was probably, I'm now my dad's age when I came home from school, you know. Yeah. And I'm thinking yeah. about like, what he was doing then and trying to find himself. Not till Seinfeld, really, because he loved performing. He loved being, you know, he just loved doing it. And at that time, that was pre-Seinfeld. He was sort of trying to figure out not being in the comedy act with my mom anymore. Yeah. You know, how to figure it out. Yeah. Ben, do you ever wonder about, just sort of in, in the context of your own relationship to your parents who were performers, and then your kids, and and think about what their mm -hmm. perspective is of, of you guys. Or Jason, do you think about it? Because I I've thought about it a few times now, recently, especially as the kids are getting older and becoming teenagers, about how. What a weird, I always make the joke when the kids come to, anytime they come to work with me, I'm like, hey, is it fun watching dad get his makeup put on? You know, um, <laughs> because how fucking weird is that? Or watching them, you know, yeah. 50 people dress, trying to make my hair look okay. And then like, Will, put that other shirt on, and like in front of my son who's 13. He must be like, what is going on? Uh -huh. Do you guys think about that? I don't, I don't, I don't. Yeah. No? Just because you're used to it? Yeah, I, well, I think they get it at this age now, I guess. But it, it's, um, it is, it is odd for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, my kids are my daughter's twenty, and my son's going to be seventeen, and they both have very, you know, clear points of view on show business and acting, and you know, their perception of my career and Christine's career, and you know, they've grown up around it, so they have their own ideas about it which is interesting to me and they've they've watched all of that stuff and i think it is a lot of it is kind of weird but it's also they see the perspective on it too and you know that i love doing it and i think they get the positive part of it too but it's something that i grew up with too i was around my parents getting makeup on and all i, yeah. I have these visceral memories of that and loving it <laughs> you know yeah, like yeah. loving being around the backstage of it because it's because di it's different they're not going to an office they're now yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned christine of course jason and i know christine very well from arrested development Days. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we got to spend a lot of time with her and amazing, just awesome. And every time I think about the other thing I think about when I think about you and Arrested Development, it reminds me of the Ben Stiller show because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you guys were on the air for one year and you won the Emmy for Best Comedy. That's mm -hmm. right. Which yeah. is a, which is very it was crazy because we'd already been canceled too. We were right. you'd <laughs> already been <laughs> canceled. And so when we won, David Cross said to Jason and me, I don't know if Jason remembers like uh oh, this doesn't look good. I've uh, I've been down this path before. <laughs> right. <laughs> talk to me a little. Talk to us a little bit about the Ben Stiller show, how it came to be, and how it burned so bright and so quickly. <laughs> now, was this this was before or after SNL? Uh, this was after SNL. After. I was I was at SNL for literally for six weeks. Six oh weeks. My God. Oh, wow. Yeah. And why and, why did you jump? Oh, yeah. Go 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 SNL first. I mean. Yeah. It's, You've probably told this story a million times. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, yeah, no, I, it's, I basically got on SNL because I made a short film that was a takeoff on The Color of Money, which was called The Hustler of Money. This is the adult film. Yeah. Yes, and I was doing an impression of Tom Cruise and Jim Downey, who was the head writer at the time. Sure. Took, he, you know, he liked it, and, they, and Lauren put it on the air. And <laughs> then they said, you can come and audition and, and be an apprentice writer and a featured player. And I wanted to make short films. I wanted to do, I wanted to direct little films like Albert Brooks did. Yeah. And, you know, which I grew up watching and thinking that's, you know, that's the funniest thing. Like him doing, you know, the new fall season where he'd, you know, make fun of the shows and the shows were coming out and things like that. <laughs> yeah. And they weren't doing that at the time. It was pre all the Lonely Island guys and all that. So... I was just there as like a, as a featured player, and I was not great at live performing. I did not like it. I, I would get nervous. I didn't feel like I could really do my thing. It was and it was hard to navigate. And I had a chance to do 
what I wanted to do on MTV because MTV was doing these little, um, they, you know, sort of like half video shows. Like basically, like they show vid- if you showed videos, you could do comedy sketches, but it had to be like half and half videos and comedy. And so they were basically saying, if you want to do that, you can do that here. So I decided to go do that. Who 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 championed you at MTV? Do you remember? Um, well, I mean, Doug Herzog. Yeah, he was, yeah. Great. you know, running the network. Yeah, yeah. he's great. Um, and Freston, too. He gave, yeah, Tom Freston, he gave us a shot. The great Tom Freston. Yeah, and... The, the most interesting man in the world, Tom Freston, mm-hmm. by the Inspired way. Inspired that whole campaign for Dosek. He really is. Not a lot of people know that. Well, no. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he truly um, is. <laughs> I've never really known him that well, but he always seems incredibly intriguing. He's the best guy. He's the most interesting... You can, wa- I, you can walk into a room with the biggest music stars in, uh, on the planet, and everybody just wants to talk to Freston. It's yeah. a true story. And that was an interesting time at, at MTV because they were just starting to do programming. So they yeah. let us do our thing. And then from that, someone Fox at the Fox, fledgling Fox network saw what we were doing and said, hey, come and develop something. HBO was producing it. Uh, Chris Albrecht, who was uh, wow. an executive at HBO. And, and we were doing it for HBO and Fox, HBO Independent Production. So we oh, were basically wow. for like two years developing this sketch show. And we did like three pilots for it. Every time we couldn't figure out... They couldn't figure out like, what was the best way to frame the show. So we who tried. was writing that with you? It was you? You were at the helm. Capital and, and you Odenkirk. And first, it was me and Jeff Kahn, who was my my roommate and writing partner, and we were doing an act that we then turned into that MTV show. And then I met Judd, yeah. And Judd and I clicked. He was doing stand up, and uh, I think he was doing like the Young Comedian Special or something. And we just started hanging out. And I was going and hanging out at the Improv and watching Janine Garofalo and. Bob and uh, Bob and I had met at SNL, right? When I was there, and he was writing at the time with Conan, and so was Andy Dick doing stand up. Um, Andy Dick was actually in Chicago at the time, yeah. And I did a movie in Chicago called Next of Kin, this Patrick Swayze movie, and I made a short while I was there, and I met Andy <laughs> Dick. <laughs> wow. Andy Dick came, yeah, and literally Andy Dick. The way I met Andy Dick was I was at my hotel in Chicago, and. Um, he knocked on the door. I opened the door, and there was just an infant laying on the floor in the hallway. <laughs> he left his infant son on the floor. For a gag. his way of, yeah, for a gag. Um, <laughs> who I later adopted, and no. Um, nice. So, yeah, so anyway, uh, it, that, that's how the group came together. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, uh, all right, wait, so. Wait, so uh, then, so you do, you do, I, want, I just yep. want to get, so you've got this whole crew, at the because I just love the genesis of all this. So you've got like it's like you and Bob and 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 Judd and you're doing the Ben Seeler show. You guys get canceled. You win uh, the Emmy for best comedy. Yeah. Uh, after the show's canceled, which is like, wh- what was your speech like? Hey, fuck you, Fox, or something like that. It wasn't very articulate. I was like, yeah. I think it was like, hey, Fox, you missed something here or something. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, then, so then you do that. <laughs> That'll show them. Do you go exactly. right on to Reality Bites? After well, that? I was going to say. So, yeah. like within yeah. a couple of years, you go on to Reality Bites, which you act in, which you direct. Did you write Your first film as a director, right? No. Helen Childress wrote it. Yes, it was my first film as a director. I'd been developing it while we were working on the Ben Stiller show with Helen, who wrote it about her life. And then the show got canceled, and just about the time when Nona Ryder said she wanted to do the movie, which made it happen. So that was was the reason it happened. Wasn't Jon Stewart in that as well? Uh, John Stewart? No. Was he? No? Who was in that film? In Reality Bias? Yeah, name the Ethan Hawke. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, I always get those two confused. (laughs) I al- it always happens to me. I'm an, e- I'm an Ethan Hawke fan. I'm going to go on the yeah. record and say I'm an Ethan Hawke fan. Yeah. Um, Ethan's amazing. Yeah, so He's good. amazing. So yeah. uh, Did you see him do True West recently? No, I no. wanted to. With so Paul bad. Dana? Oh, my no, God. I've been uh, so observing good. a thing called the pandemic, Ben. Go on. <laughs> it's pre-pandemic. Jesus Christ, did I, did I go to the thing? What are you talking about? <laughs> do, we, do we go right into there's something about Mary after Reality Bites? And if no. so, no. No, no, no. There's a... Um, there's like a five-year gap. Where to go, Jason? Your guess. Yeah. Where'd Sorry. Go? Well, it's Wikipedia. It's their fault. <laughs> um, was Cable Guy before? There's something about Mary. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so that was the second second film that you directed. Yeah. Cable Guy. Incredible film. I, I love that yeah, film too. Um, not not really well received at the time. They just didn't get it. They didn't no. get it at the oh, time. Oh, I thought it was fantastic. just like just like uh, the Ben Stiller show. Ben, did you put? We're, we're going. To, we're firing away questions now. <laughs> did you put uh, uh, Cable Guy? Owen Wilson's in there in a small role. Is, is That's that right. right. That's how I met Owen. And yeah. it was right after Bottle Rocket because that came out about 95. That's exactly right. I'm so yeah. good with dates. Man. I saw the Bottle Rocket short. There was a black and white Bottle Rocket I saw short that, too. that Wes made. Yeah. 
incredible. Incredible. And the film, Bottle Rocket, is one of the best films. And I remember one time, here's my recollections of Owen Wilson. I see that movie. I was living in New York at the time. I was like, this is fucking cool, this movie these assholes made. And then I, I go to L.A. and I happen to see him like at Valet. And I'm like, look at that. That's the guy from Bottle Rocket. And then he's in Cable Guy. And then I'm like, yeah. I sort of fell in love with Owen Wilson. I was like, this guy is the funniest guy I've ever yeah, seen. He's smooth. I went, I went to see Bottle Rocket by myself at like Century City Theater or something, and I had just hired him for, for Cable Guy, and I watched that movie, and I started laughing like five minutes in by myself for the whole movie. I was just, I was like, this is the funniest, <laughs> like, oh my God, this guy is incredible. It's so funny. His delivery was so peculiar. Oh, man. I know. Oh, how, man. So you, how many films have you done with him, and was the next one after um, A Cable Guy, was it, what, did you guys work together again before Starsky and Hutch? I'm stressing out now, because I can't remember. Let right. me see. Yeah, Zoolander. Zoolander was 2001. Yeah, we did. I mean, the, we did a movie called Permanent Midnight. Yes. Which where it was like this little indie uh, where yeah. I played Jerry Stahl, who was a, a comedy writer who was addicted to heroin, and he played my best friend in that. That was 98. Who wrote on Elf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Which my mom was on, actually. And, yeah, uh, well. and then what did we do? We did, uh, and then we did Zoolander together, which was like yeah. 2000, 2001. And then I think Starsky and Hutch was after that, which was, of course, Jason. You've probably done like, what, six with him? Seven with I him? I think somebody said we've done like 11. No way. Yeah. Uh, right, because then you did all the Night at the Museum movies together. Oh, exactly, right, 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 that's right, right. three and then, there. And then, Except we never actually worked together because he was like a little person in it. Oh, yes, right, 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 like a little figurine. And so I would go. Oh, that's right. This is how they would work. It's like we would go to the Museum of Natural History in New York at the beginning for a day or maybe two days to shoot the exteriors. Then we would go to Vancouver for f five months in the middle of winter and be in the, the studio where it was the, you know, the fake museum. And then Owen would come in the last three days and shoot all of his stuff and, you know, steal the movie. Against a green screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the no incredible way. Canadian rocket ship, Sean Levy. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. I love him. The ball of fire. I auditioned for the sequel, The Night, Night at the Museum 2. Really? And I went in and ran, uh, read for Sean Levy. And I go, you know, maybe I did the scene and I go, you know, maybe funny if this thing and this and I took out the thing here and I did this. And he goes, yeah, why, you want to direct it? Thanks for coming. Oh. <laughs> no, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I came in with a lot uh, of, too many he's ideas. Got a sneaky, he's got a sneaky knife there in that Canadian kind <laughs> suit of his. He sure does. He'll whip it out every once in a while. He's a friend of the it. program. He's a friend of the program. <laughs> Sean's a friend oh, of yeah, the program. Oh, yeah, he's great. So, he's great. Um, so what do you answer? Do you say yes, you wanted to direct it? Because what an opportunity. <laughs> By the way, she's what the opportunity. opportunity. We Wait, bonded. We bonded on that movie. So, Ben, how hard was it? Do you wish... Like, Regret-wise, career. Do you wish cut Bateman out of Starsky? Would that would be yeah. up there? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it's a real easy cut. Not a lot of trimming. Um, no, but then you guys also do. I was, and I was joking because you guys did a few movies. You also did uh, Dodgeball. That's right. Oh, you, right. Yeah, that was an afternoon. Yeah, but I feel like that afternoon really made a mark. I mean, I it, see it the helped. memes. It helped me, Jason. You were hilarious in that. Thank you. That was on, during a lunch hour from Arrested Development. Oh, wow. Really? Are you serious? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, oh my I drove God. down to the, where did we shoot it? Like the Rose Bowl, I think. It was well. The, oh, did you do that at the Rose Bowl? Because we I also shot so. down in Long Beach too. Yeah, um, one of the. Two. I mean, really, that was really fun. That was a really fun experience. And uh, I remember you know, walking out of that screening. I was sitting next to Todd Phillips at the screening, um, the premiere of that in Westwood. I remember watching it, and you know, I had no idea what the movie was. I mean, again, I was only there for half an hour, you know, doing doing this, you know, basically a lock off me behind a microphone playing some idiot color announcer, <laughs> and I had no idea what the color, of the tone, the comedic tone of that. And so I didn't really know what the film was about till I saw it at the screening. And, I, and and we finished the screening, and and obviously well, the name of the movie is Dodgeball. Dodgeball, very very funny, yeah, incredibly broad. But I guess I just wasn't prepared for the 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 style, the flavor of humor. I remember walking out with Todd Phillips and doing the taboo thing when you're going up the aisle way, talking about the film, you know. And I I said no, I said, boy, I don't know. I mean, you know, what do you think? He's like, oh, that was pretty damn good. I go, really? He said, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what, Todd, I'll make you a hundred dollar bet. This thing doesn't do a dollar over fifty million dollars. He goes, I'll bet you a thousand. I said, you're on. I think it does. What does it do? Like. I think it did that in the first weekend or something. It did well. It, it actually, yeah, it just, opened number one. I know that. It was my uh, God, what surprising. A that fucking um, did you pay so him? Funny. Jason, did you pay him a thousand? I don't bucks? think yeah. so. 
No. Yeah, well, Todd's doing okay. That's why he's, he's Todd right. Phillips. Come on. Yeah, you owe him $1,000 and he can... <laughs> but you, but that's, that's funny though, Jason, because I feel like you totally hit the tone of the movie well, without only knowing because it. I remember... And in fact, I Jason, when you I were first, in your own movie. You had your own little movie going, which is amazing. First, I remember when I first got to the set, I remember going down, I found I look, I, I found you and Ross in, uh, in Video Village. You guys were shooting a different scene and I got there a little early to get into makeup because or because I my hair had to get all spiked up and stuff. <laughs> and so I was like, so guys, so the spike hair like that's the tone that's the funny and you guys were both like yeah yeah i go huh uh and then i don't know whether it was my idea or rawson's or yours maybe ben i said well like is it like would this guy have like a flaming net neck tattoo of like a dodgeball on it and they were like yes yes do that so <laughs> it's like a flaming dodgeball <laughs> neck tattoo is like i think i got the tone now i think i get it yeah you know who never really understood was rip torn who was so funny in the movie <laughs> he never got and my my brother-in-law was in charge brian taylor was in charge of taking care of him for the movie like he was oh, sort of like God. his handler He's and his got into some yeah um and he never really you know jumped on board but he was so funny he because he so was just funny. being rip my favorite my favorite Rip Torn story was I remember Jeffrey on Arrested telling us when they were doing um, Larry Sanders and they were in their last season and um, they go, um, they decide that they're going to get Gary Shandling. Everybody's going to chip it and buy him a car. They've done this show for five, six seasons. And everybody's going to chip in as this big rap and as a thank you to Gary, they're going to get him a car. So Jeffrey's tasked with going to get it and he goes up to Rip's dressing room and he knocks on the, knocks on the dressing room door and he goes, um, Rip opens it and goes, yeah, what? And he goes, uh, oh, hey, Rip, we're gonna, uh, we're all, we're all pitching in. We're gonna get uh, uh, Gary a gift for a rap for the whole series. And he goes, oh yeah, what are we gonna get him? And he goes, well, we've decided we're all gonna chip in. We're gonna get him in a car. Rip looks at him and goes, go fuck yourself. And slams the door shut. <laughs> <on him. laughs> Oh, yep. <laughs> His answer was go fuck yourself. <laughs> I think one day on set he decided he was just going to go fishing. He like left to go fishing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the terrible. middle of a shoot day. <laughs> it did. And we will be right back. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. So life can be overwhelming. Right, And many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation or like feeling helpless or trapped or attached, fatigue and tons of other stuff. I, you know, when I was doing that play in Chicago, it was, you know, the repetition of it day in and day out, working all day and night through rehearsals and then the opening and the eight shows a week. And while it's what I love to do, there's part of it that is, that takes a toll on you mentally and you start to miss life and you start to miss the people and your regular routine because you're now in this new routine and it kind of can shake things up in your brain. So we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out and BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Smartless listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash smartless. That's betterhelp.com slash smartless. Smartless is brought to you in part by ZipRecruiter. Oh, look, we got somebody from Down Under joining us. Welcome. Hey, fair income. Yeah. How you yeah. going? Yeah, I think um, it's a great idea to keep learning new skills. Okay. Uh, I'd like to learn how to save money. I'd like to learn how to plant without killing it. <laughs> I'd love to know how to speak Spanish. I'd love to make the perfect pizza crust, you know? Is that in that order? That's a strange... Okay, look, if you're always learning, it keeps you sharp. Well, like ZipRecruiter, their AI is always learning. It's always learning. So if you're hiring, I'm just saying if you're hiring, their AI gets better and faster at finding the right candidates for all your roles. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash 
Smart life. You know, and I hear ZipRecruiter uses its powerful technology yeah. to find and match yes. the right candidates yeah. up with your job. They then do, it yeah. uh, proactively yeah. presents yeah. these candidates to you. Is that true? Well, not only, yes, that is true, but not only that, you can easily review these recommended candidates and invite your top choices to apply for your job, which encourages them to apply faster. So oh, kind of do the math on that. Great idea. It's yeah. probably why ZipRecruiter then is the number one rated hiring site in the U.S. I mean, uh, based on G2 ratings that I've read. Yes, it is. And that is exactly and and yep. and and, yep, and more. now what? you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive what? web address. Yeah, hang Tell on, me. just ZipRecruiter uh, dot com maybe. Yep, that's it. ZipRecruiter dot com slash smartless. That's ZipRecruiter dot com slash s m a r t l e s s. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Smartless is brought to you by Hunter Douglas. Who doesn't love to live well? To be perfectly at ease in comfort and style, guess what? Hunter Douglas can help you do just that with their innovative window shade designs, gorgeous fabrics, and control systems so advanced they can be scheduled to automatically adjust to their optimal position throughout the day. That's right, you can schedule them. Perhaps it's the way the shades diffuse harsh sunlight to cast a beautiful glow across the room or my face, or being able to enjoy the view outside the window while protecting your privacy inside. Maybe it's the superior insulation the shades provide, keeping you warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and lowering utility bills. Or is it simply that Goldilocks moment when you walk into a room and everything about it looks and feels just right? And when you tap into Hunter Douglas Power View technology, your shades can be set to automatically reposition for the perfect balance of light, privacy, and insulation, morning, noon, and night. I think you guys are gonna love Hunter Douglas because when you walk into a room with Hunter Douglas shades, it's like a new room. It's like, oh my, it's like you remodeled the whole thing, but with all of these great uh, additions and functions, all in a shade. It's like amazing. So live beautifully with Hunter Douglas, enjoying greater convenience, enhanced style, and increased comfort in your home throughout the day. And right now, for a limited time, you can take advantage of generous rebate savings opportunities on select styles. Visit HunterDouglas.com slash smartless for details. That's HunterDouglas.com slash smartless. And now back to the show. When you read the script for There's Something About Mary, um, did you have like incredible faith in those directors, writers, that it was all going to be um, a, a, a target that is hit? Or it seemed like a big swing. It was, yeah. I remember reading the script very clearly and and laughing out loud reading yeah. the script and Good. thinking that this will either be really, really, really funny or it'll just be awful. It'll be like a, just like the worst movie ever. Like it, it will not work. But like that's a perfect example of like the value you bring to something that's taking swings as big as that. You yeah. need a Ben Stiller in the middle of it. Yeah, you know? but they weren't they weren't coming after me for that movie. I was I wanted to be in that movie. I was trying to you know get in yeah. that movie. Mm -hmm. um, you were chasing it. Yeah, and because I really did think it could be really funny, but I didn't know. And then like working with them, working with the Farrellys on the set, I was actually that was where I was like, wait a minute, is this actually going to work? Because it was such a weird environment. How I so? mean, because it wasn't. It was just not like any movie set I'd ever been on. There was like, they were just having so much fun and playing practical jokes on each other. <laughs> you know, very politically incorrect <laughs> practical jokes. Right. And, putting, all their, um, putting all their friends in scenes and stuff. Yeah, like putting friends in scenes and not really talking about like motivation or things like that. And, <laughs> you know, like I would get into like arguments with them about like the logic of a scene or, you know, like, oh, I'm in the bathroom and my, you know, my dick's in the zipper. But like, why are all these people walking by the window? It's like, I felt like I was in a Marx Brothers movie or something. <laughs> You know, I, or like there was like, you know, the scene where it's like dripping on my, my ear, yeah, uh -huh. you know, and I was like, why don't I feel that on my ear? Why wouldn't I feel it? Should we set oh up that I ha like that I lost sensitivity in my ear when I was a child or something? Oh my my earlobe doesn't feel anything. And they were like, no, it's just gonna be funny. A lot of those conversations. Yeah. Like, ben, don't worry about it. Don't fucking Ben. So ben, I was the pain in the ass actor, Jason. Right. On that you were movie. the Jason. Right. You were the Bateman on that set. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Well, I've always felt like if we just work just two minutes longer, we can yeah. establish that he's lost sensitivity in the ear. And then <laughs> yeah. for anyone who's a cynic in the audience, we got him covered.
That's yeah. a real conversation I had. I had a yeah. serious conversation like I, and, that. And, and I yeah. would respond to that conversation. <laughs> oh, I would, Jason would have turned that into a sidebar. I'd be like, yes, on page 20, we can drop that little breadcrumb. <laughs> yeah, Good idea, exactly. Ben. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we used to always say, I used to, I always, by, by the way, their answer, I'm sure, was always like, you know what, Ben, don't worry about it. Cam Neely thinks it's funny. But, yes. and, also, <laughs> and also that, like, I used to say to Jason sometimes, what's he'd up, be Cam? asking questions. And I, yeah, no, by the way, what's up, Cam? One of the great all-time hockey players. <laughs> um, Jason, we sometimes go, hey, you want you know what? Why don't you take that over to workshop uh, on the workshop stage over on stage seven, okay? We'll talk about that <laughs> over there. Let's just get the scene today, huh? Hey, Ben. <laughs> So when you now that you are on to bigger things like directing great shows like Severance and whatever else you have less done, come like, laden projects. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so are you? <laughs> He's finished with the Hustler of Money, and there's something about Mary. Are you looking for less come in, in your future projects? <laughs> Go, Sean. Um, are you, uh, what attracts you to certain projects? Are, are you like, for example, like Severance is a little sci fi y. Are you a sci fi fan? Did you accept that because of the challenge? He hates of it? Star Trek. Or do I, you know that? Or, or, do you <laughs> or do you only choose things that are like, like what wouldn't yeah. you choose? At this point, I kind of just go this, uh, with a gut feeling, honestly. Like I, mm -hmm. if I read something or I start to develop something, it's because it's something that I'm really, I just really feel turned on by and I really like. like and would I you ever do a horror film? Maybe, but I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it just well, you're to do horror. it. Or you horror. Horror? Yeah. Okay. Horror. Okay. horror. Sorry? Horror. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Horror. Horror. Okay, horror. good. Um, I, you know, but like with, with Severance, it was, I, it, I thought it was funny actually when I read yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Because it funny. reminded me of The Office and Office Space and that kind of humor, you know, that, that, that thing that's developed. That melancholy, less... bleak humor. <laughs> yeah. No, it became much less funny but than like I But like that uh, Adam's uh, awesome yeah. at, you're awesome at. Yeah, I, thought, I just thought conceptually it was really interesting to do that kind of humor, but yet the people had no idea who they were or what they were doing or why they were there. Right. But yet they're in this sort of rhythm, you know? Yeah, I yeah. love knowing both you and Adam. I love and, and, and being such a fan of both of yours in every respect and, yeah, and watching yeah. the scenes and thinking about you guys collaborating uh, to me is very exciting to watch because I, I see both of you guys. Yeah. He's operating at such a high level and I can feel your your hand in it as well, but not heavy handed, but I can feel both of yeah. you guys were Because you met on Walter Mitty, right? Yeah. It's so good, Ben. It's so good, man. Thanks, I mean, man. You're I, well, really, yeah. well, thank you. But I, I think Adam is amazing. I mean, we met I on agreed. Walter Mitty. I saw him in Step Brothers which really yeah. just blew my mind so how good. funny he was in that movie. <laughs> yeah. It was just it, like I couldn't stop watching uh -huh. him do those scenes where, you know, the dinner table scenes where, and, you know, and it was more than just being like a dick or whatever. Like he had just this uh, level of specificity that just it was incredible to me. I love him. I want to talk about like your ability to direct and write and act in stuff that's like epic, but also like... Walter Mitty and Tropic Thunder, I think, are, the scope and scale of those movies Agreed. are just enormous, but you're still able to get real small and specific with some character comedy that's not, it's not jokey, it's not this, it's not, I mean, I guess there's incredible jokes in Tropic Thunder, but it, it's still, I, I don't know, you're able to manage, it seems like, multiple genres in one project. Uh, there's no real question here, it's just, just, just oh, that admiration. Thanks. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's like not, you know, getting away from genres. Did you see that movie, The Worst Person in the World? Not yet, but not I, yet. I, uh, oh man, Paul Thomas that, Anderson was on the was on the podcast, and yeah. he was talking. He was talking really about it, yeah. big about it. Yeah. Well, it's and he does it too. It's you know, I admire filmmakers, and I haven't done this, but filmmakers who just say screw it with genre. I don't care about right. genre. Yeah. Who are able to just say I'm going to make them, and maybe in their head they're thinking it's this genre, or that genre, or it relates to that, but they're uh -huh. just going to make something that to them is a movie that, you know, that they relate to and that yeah. they feel, makes them feel something. And that's yeah. so, f for me, like, I, I try not to think about the genre, you know, at that much and just try to go, go okay, what's going to make this funny? What's going to make this real in, the, in this moment? And that's what tone is, you know? But what's going to make it powerful? Like with Mitty, it was just, it was just so powerful and heavy at times. And when it, when it wanted to become sort of this epic fable, it did. When it wanted to get really small and intimate, it did. Um, and that was a passion project for you, Ben. It took you a long time to get that up there. Well, yeah. didn't it? And Steve it's Conrad all, yeah, did such Steve an incredible Conrad. job writing that. It's yeah. all Steve Conrad. He yeah. wrote the script and it came to me. And then there was one I also wanted to be a part of. And then Steve and I were able to 
connect on it. And uh, I, I really loved working with him on it because- He's doing incredible work on television too. Oh my God, Patriot. Yeah. That, that show, like talk about defying genres, you yeah. know? Ben, you, you've always had a really great eye for, and we mentioned Owen, uh, uh, but you've had a really great eye for emerging talent and you, you've you always stayed really close to what's going on, especially in comedy, not to, in, in film in general, I think as well, but, but, but especially comedy. Who are the people these days who are making you laugh? You're going, fuck, this is yeah. new. This is somebody doing something in a different, and you've always respected people who do it in a way, like you said about Owen, again, yeah. people who do it differently. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm, you know, I feel sometimes that I'm not as connected as I should be. I'm not seeing everything and out there mm. because I kind of get wrapped up in working on the project I'm working on. And so I'll see people who come in and audition or read or mm -hmm. um, I don't watch as much television as I feel that I should. Um, I Are did you good get, about watching films? I am not as good at, lately I'm not. Yeah. I'm not as good at watching a lot of stuff. I get inundated. I feel like it's it's just so, like there's so much to watch. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I did get, recommended to watch uh this show dave and yeah oh yeah i it's so really funny about that. i really I think it's that. good yeah so dave bird funny there are yeah. some moments in that that are so funny he's really specific he's really <sighs> honest of, you know he's the rapper Lil dicky it's i thought it really developed over the two seasons um there's an episode with kareem abdul jabbar that is so funny really where yeah um and kareem abdul jabbar is so good is i mean he, really? he I was good in airplane but like he's really good at this. <laughs> um and but, but dave airplane. to me it's like this guy is do it he's just being really really honest and creating his own tone but it's really funny and it you know, it's it's just, it's self-effacing, but it's honest. And I think uh, that's, you know, to me, when you see somebody doing that, uh, it's really exciting. Having done mm -hmm. so much at such a high level for so long, um, you know, that this qualifies as a completely fully realized career, yet you're still a young man. So the stuff that I'm assuming you want to still get done uh, since you've kind of checked all boxes um, is just what, just a... a, a, a continue sort of an escalation in your taste, your talent in the same genres and the same, you know, television, film, comedy, drama, whatever it is. It's just your taste is going to continue to evolve. And that's what you want to continue doing is just keep he wants to know. To he's trying to ask Ben. Sorry, it's a long sorry, way to go. He's trying to ask if you're if you're Oscar hunting. To, <laughs> that's what he wants to know. Who isn't Jason? Uh, uh, yeah, right. Jason. Um, um, you know, or do you, want to, or do you want to do something about a guy who's like in his early fifties, who started right. working out, and he went to fight camp, and he probably yeah. plays oh, thirty-eight. You. you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, is, that, is that a story that interests you? Like a guy, um, like he's with a perpetual tan. He's kind of dry. Shut it, Sean. I'm telling a story about a guy <laughs> who nobody's ever seen before. Who's very well lit? Yeah, uh -huh. he's very I, um, well yeah. lit. <laughs> I um, no, I you know, it's a good question, Jason. It's a yeah. really good question, and I. I'm sort of constantly asking myself that, I guess, as I go through life these days because I'm trying to find the balance. And, you know, that's really important to me is the balance of being able to have a personal life that I feel good mm. in. Yeah. And I've, I've found over the years, and, you know, I'm sure you've experienced, you've all experienced this, that it's challenging to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm more self-aware these days about that. Uh, but I love... I love directing. I'm trying to reconnect with my acting self, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm really trying to figure it out. Um, I know I love acting, but I don't want to also do it. There's something, you know, just to be honest, there's something very uh, uh, enticing about being an actor and, and being a star of things and having, you know, all that attention. Well, uh, and also, it's, it's, it's of, of all the jobs, producer, writer, director, actor, whatever, it's kind of like you have your shit, and that's, you don't have to worry about all the big picture stuff you know, you have right. to worry about your scene work. It's, uh, I think. Right. But that, that, I'm trying not to go, I don't want to go back to it just because I kind of l l enjoy that part of it, you know? Right. And yeah. Or the moolah. The moolah. Or, yeah, nice the moolah. The moolah, the moolah is, is really good too. <laughs> but you uh, enjoy, you're enjoying working <laughs> as an actor in, in what are like director vehicles, something like working with some of your heroes. I'm I would sure, love like to Noah, work. I would know? love to do that. Yes. I'd love yeah. to keep acting in other people's movies yeah. um, or even television shows too. Yeah. Figuring out a comedy to do, I would, I would love to jump back in. I've, been talking to Mike Judge about something, and oh, cool. I think I love Mike Judge. And um, yeah, so, so, what a what a yeah. Jason, you worked with him. Uh, what yeah, a yeah. great, what a incredible yeah. comedic voice. What, what about doing something like Sean does though? Like, would you be able to go? Sean's in Chicago. Talk about sacrificing. He goes there and he he's rehearsing and doing this play nonstop every day to 
Ben, I don't know if you know this, Sean's had incredible reviews mm -hmm. uh, Congrats, for, for his That's film. Great. Yeah, Thank you. And I want to see this play, and I had a personal interest in the Oscar LeVant story because Stuart Kornfeld had, had championed it for a long time. Oh, and, no uh, kidding. Yeah. I've, got, I've got up in my living room uh, a Richard Avedon portrait of Levant from late no in his way. life, wow. incredible shot when he, you know, very near the end, which just really kind of a striking photo. Of yes, I, I, know, I know the one. Give that to Sean. No. It totally makes sense for you to give it to Sean. Yeah, to just <laughs> give it to him. Sign or it. come over to my house and look at it. No, yeah, just commit to giving it to him now <laughs> here on the show. But we, could you ever see yourself, Ben, doing that, doing eight shows a week on Broadway? And you've done that. Yes, you? I could. I. I I have done it not for a, a long time, um, yeah, and I and I've, I've been thinking about that too. It could be really, really, uh, it's scary. But and yeah. I'm curious, Sean, have you enjoyed the process? Have you? Yeah, very yeah. much. So, I mean, talk about you know. I think it's right up your alley, Ben. Not that you don't know that already, but just the the day to day scene work, the uh, dramaturgy of discovering. Uh, yeah. you know, intense. And right, when you keep going with something, because you never get to do that when you're doing a movie That's or exactly a show, right. that you get into episode, I mean, to um, performance 100 or right. 150, and all of a sudden you're just, you're having to discover new stuff, and it, op it can open up in a way that it never did before. It's really cool, yeah. and you discover, and through the rehearsal process, you break down just every word, every sentence, every moment, and it's yep. and you refine it, and it's really cool. And isn't there also a great simplicity to doing theater too, where it's like you live your life, you wake up, you know, you have your routine, you maybe ride your bike to the theater, you know, you yeah. have your backpack. I mean, the, it's, it's, it's simple if you're not a crazy person like I am, which is like, I wake up, I'm like, <clears throat> I gotta warm up my, and do the voice thing, and then you gotta make right. sure you drink it and eat the right thing, and then you gotta go early. Get, get Finger exercises thing. for all the piano playing, right? Are you, are you actually playing the piano? I'm actually oh, playing yeah. the Rhapsody oh, yeah. He's a, he's oh, a yeah. classically trained pianist he's doing right? wow yeah wow yeah. he's incredible yeah. yeah well thank you and so everything is is leading to that performance time well it's right? a, yeah it's a really cool concept doug wright who wrote it um it, the, it's a true story that uh, oscar levant got a, a pass from the treatment center that he was in a four-hour pass to get out and appear on a on a game show for our play we switched it to the tonight show because everybody knows the tonight show so he's got four hours to appear then he has to go back to treatment and it's what happened in that Incredible. night and sean does it every night and he plays the piano and he does all these and he's got like 80 monologues and he does this all it's on crazy. a belly full of mcdonald's every night <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> will actually ran line will ran lines with me on the tour and he was like you have to fucking say that it was it was honestly ben i thought like it's oh this is, i just i would call it and just say i'm not showing up i'm sorry <laughs> i quit <laughs> that's incredible um yeah. speaking of quitting yes Ben. Ben, we've taken up, we could do two hours, three hours yeah. with you. I love being a part of your show. Your show is <sighs> awesome. It's, it, by the way, it, in our family, it's the one podcast, because we're not a big podcast family, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's it reached the whole family. My daughter, I think, has listened to every single episode. No way. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Well, tell her hi, please. Yeah, oh, big gosh. fan. Um, even Christine, who's not a big podcast listener, really enjoys the show. Tell her hi, too. I thought you were going to say, even Christine, who dislikes Will immensely. <laughs> <Yeah>. She. <laughs> Here's how much my daughter likes it. She has no interest in, in F1, Formula One racing. I'm really into it. My son, oh, Quinn, is I'm really into it, too. I'm getting into it, too. Willie's but into it. But she and I were driving from Boston to New York, and we listened to the Daniel Ricardo episode. Uh -huh. and, yeah. she, and, and she sat through it because she does, ha, cares nothing about F1, but because she loves the show, she listened to it. I uh -huh. thought it was, that was a fascinating episode to He's hear him cool talk dude. about it. I thought it was so great. Yeah. Was he? I like so that fascinating. Guy. But anyway, the show's awesome and happy to be with oh, you guys. Thanks, we man. didn't even uh, cover any of the uh, torrid love affair between Tony Wonder and oh Joe Bluth. Um, I know. But I know. if you guys uh, want to have a private moment, uh, there's Ben, do you ever have people come up to you and just say, same? same. <laughs> do you remember, Ben? Do you remember how insane that day was when we shot that stuff? We uh, laughed so hard. God, ridiculous. So, yeah, our, it's so Sean, much fun. Sean, oh our, my characters, God. our characters, our characters on Arrested. Sean's never Arrested Development was a show it used to be on. He's not Jason aware of and it. I, and, and, and Ben was on, and his wife Christine. The whole Stiller family was on. You were not on, and you've never watched it. And it's nice of you, Sean. But but Ben and our recurring thing over the years was that ben, that our characters were comedi uh, competing magicians. And at, and at the very end, it turns out that maybe they were in love with each other, but maybe not. But, but maybe neither of them had never really had a friend. So that's, that's why they liked each other. That's hysterical. It was insane. Yeah. Very wasn't ambiguous. It? Yeah. And we were really connected when we got together. Yeah. Right. Like both, <laughs> both in sort of like, same. you know. Yeah. Same, same, same. 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 <laughs> 
That's really funny. <laughs> so um, well, so we fun. love you here at Smartless, Ben. Yeah, we love um, you, Ben. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, you guys hi do. to the family, and thank you for saying yeah. yes to uh, yeah. sitting with us for an hour. Great to see you all, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Great to see you too. That'd man. be great. All right, Bye. buddy. All right. Talk soon. Bye, guys. Bye, Ben. Bye, so Bye Ben. Ben Franklin Stiller. Unbelievable. <laughs> he's huh? great. I mean, I mean, isn't he? He's one of the most famous comedic actors of our generation. He's been. He's done so much. I mean, so you much. Do a so little many bit of history on comedy. him. I know. It's Tons nuts. of things. If you had done any research at all, Jason, then you then we would have been here for three. Hours. Some of the stuff. If yeah. just any. But Jason, do you remember that first day when he showed up on Arrested, and we only had him for like two hours because he was in the middle of like eight big movies. Yeah. Yeah. And and just. The whole set, we were like, everybody was, was just a buzz. Yeah. That, oh, like, yes. Ben Stiller Huge. wanted to do our show, and we got yeah. to do this. We had him for, like, 12 minutes. It was crazy. I was so glad that I didn't have to work with him. I would have been a nervous wreck. I was with uh, Tony Hale, I guess, with Buster that first time. I was so, yeah. ner I was so nervous. Yeah. And I'd met him uh. just a couple times. He'd done that movie with Amy and, and But Jack. you used it, though, right? I, I seem to remember yeah. Job sort of, like, took on this air of, like, oh, here's my competition. Yeah. You know, like, it's, being kind of, like, all nervous and kind of uptight and aggressive. I was mad at him, but I was also right. still, like, you know. Deeply in love. Yeah. <sighs> Making faces. Jay, have you had a chance to check out Severance yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's... Oh. it's, it's Bitching. Oh, I haven't. I'm God. only a few. I'm only three. Like I said, three episodes in. So please don't say anything. I love this show. So much. I didn't even. No, I won't. But I. I didn't even. I didn't know he directed. it. I watched it. Oh really? And then I was like, I. I really. I said to Scott, I was like, God, this is directed so well. I'm not making that up. And he's. And I, we looked it up. I was like, Ben Stiller directed. That is yeah. crazy. I mean, something that specific and that yeah. precise. It doesn't just happen. Like there is a really qualified yeah. hand at you know, play You know, you know, well, yeah. Jason, you were kind of saying when, when he sets up the, like, shooting the thing, when they do those huge establishing shots of that place where they work and mm -hmm. just the way it yeah. looks and, and the, the tone of, of the, 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 the shot, just yeah. uh, aesthetically, yeah. all yeah. of it, and you're like, it's so different and new from what you know of his body of work. And you're yeah. like, right. oh, he's doing something totally new. In a, in a, and I get that he's trying to go genre -less. Yeah, uh, that he's just like, yeah, I'm going to do this now. Yeah. But he's just basically, he, I mean, he's he's listening to his taste, I guess. And that was my question. Like, how does a guy that comes from what is traditionally, you know, like the sketch world doesn't put a big, uh, a big value on, you know, aesthetics and like, you know, focal length on lenses right. and things like, you know, it, it is all about, well, just let's just write some funny stuff and make sure the camera's pointed at the person talking. You know, how does he develop that kind of taste and affinity for, you know, the stuff he's doing now, I, I, I don't, I don't know, but uh, clearly, it's a whole other side of him that uh, I don't know. I, I love and he's seeing. probably inspired by lots of different. You know, he, obviously, he's an incredibly funny comedic actor, then an incredibly funny f comedic filmmaker because he kind of did those two things simultaneously. Yeah. And then now he's just going, and people are sending him scripts, and he's just, and he's just getting inspired by yeah. w whatever's near. Bye. Bye. Oh, Bye. oh, fantastic. Wow, that's Look at you sneaking up from the yeah. rear. Yeah. That's how you do a fucking bar, wow. dick. Unbelievable. God. Well, I'm going to go think about I that one. I hate having to teach so much. Oh, you I must be exhausted. To I'm exhausted from teaching. <laughs> I'm teaching and I'm learning. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Grant Terry. Smartless. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can listen to it right now early on Amazon Music, or early and ad free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app.